Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar it will then run through the weather warnings so we do have a thunderstorm warning in force today and you can see on the live radar at the moment we do have quite a few severe thundery outbreaks across central southern and east uh, and western parts of uh, England into Wales as well. We'll also have a look at the UKV, have a look at the precipitation and temperature over the next five days. So there's a lot of up and down. There's going to be some very warm weather, 30 degrees potentially through the weekend in the east, but also some very heavy rain further northwards and westwards. And then we'll have a look at the various longer range models, look at the GFS, GM, Ethan TF, and the ensembles, as it does look like we're going to be going into quite prolonged, dry, and warm period in the south, a tad more unsettled further north it's looking likely we could even be seeing quite a prolonged heat wave in the south now after the recent spell of weather we have had it's very difficult to define heat wave at the moment because heat wave i'm sort of talking about is exceeding those heat wave thresholds which is for london is and the southeast in general is 28 degrees so it's likely for quite a period of time we get to around that 28 to 30 degree mark but at, but by no means are we seeing anything remotely close to the mid to high 30s if not 40 degrees that we have seen recently so i just want to rule that out for anyone uh that does think we've got that coming our way we don't we just have generally a Above average, touching on heat wave level, uh, potentially uh, upper air temperatures coming in at the end and end of this month and start of August. So do remember if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe, and remember to follow me on Twitter as well. The links in description. So if you start on the live radar, you can see there are a number of thundery outbreaks at the moment through Wales, southwest England into central southern England as well. For the northwest, we've got some more persistent bands of rain that have been sort of inspiring, loud, pepping, uh, sort of pepping up and dying out so it's just a bit of uh, unsettled conditions there but it's these thunderstorms that we need to keep an eye on you see where these oranges and reds are those are the torrential cells and that's where we are seeing lightning activity very heavy rain and that's where we could see some dangerous conditions that's why the warnings in force could be some flooding around and could be uh, quite a few frequent lightning strikes which can cause issues as well as we do generally have quite dry land so if you do see one of these lightning strikes come off before the heavy rain has arrived it could you know spark some wildfires things like that there's the associated risks with that now the first storm that we saw break out with this one across the south of london now and you can see it is sort of filling out turning more just to generally heavy rain still some thundery activity on its southern flank uh, offshore and you can see the direction is moving north to north eastwards because you can see where the patchy rain is further north and eastwards where the new cells are going for, for the south and the west of the area of uh, instability so you can generally see the clouds are moving in that direction so if you are near brighton eastbourne hastings even towards maidstone into kent area these heavy uh, this heavy rain and thunder activity is coming your way even the london area couldn't be ruled out for some of this uh, at least the precipitation associated with this Towards Bristol, we have a few cells breaking out as well. Nothing thundery as of yet here. You can see some heavier cells breaking out, and they are slow moving and could pep up across the afternoon. Of course, this warning is enforced until 10 p.m., as we'll see in a minute. And we have this activity across Wales as well. And again, you see big, sort of thundery cells within it. A few cells breaking out here, and they will continue to do so over the coming hours. And again, some towards Wolverhampton and West Midlands in general. Those again could start to develop. So we've got this area that we've got to keep an eye on. Uh, and we've got slow moving heavy showers and thunderstorms breaking out here and over the next few hours into this evening they could cause issues if you do get stuck underneath one of them if we do have a look at the temperatures for today it is pretty chilly day compared to what we have had you can see hardly any reds just generally some oranges which is high teens low 20s maybe the peak to the north of london towards cambridge bedford area maybe down into kent and towards oxfordshire potentially uh, those sort of highest temperatures there getting towards 21 22 23 degrees so generally average for this time of year but for most areas it is below average first below average day we've had in quite a while really and you can see the remnants of the heat is swept away into eastern europe now and it is losing its intensity quite significantly. You can see more reds here than pinks. Uh, these intense pinks were engulfing France, uh, Belgium, Netherlands and the UK only a few days ago. But now it is slowly dying out. But it's still very hot across southern Europe. So if we do get another southerly wind, we do get some hot air dragged up from the south. We will go hot once again. But for the time being, I do not see any chance of us getting toward that high 30s, 40 degree range at all within the next few weeks. So 
So we do have a look at the weather warning. As you can see, the thunderstorm warning that is in force. We did have a look at it yesterday. And again, I didn't look at it in too much detail because we did have a thunderstorm warning in force on on Wednesday, I think it was. And nothing really came off from that. So I was a bit sceptical. Uh, so the thunder activity today ha is higher than it was yes, uh, well, was a couple of days ago, that is. Um, but nothing crazy at this point. But we have got plenty of cells breaking out. So the instability there, the energy is there. So we could see some severe impacts over the course of this evening. And the big thing about these are they are slow moving. They're not quickly moving thunderstorms. Slow moving thunderstorms are much more uh, dangerous than the fast moving ones. Even though it does cross larger areas, giving heavy rain, lightning to larger areas, the intense lightning and the torrential rain over one spot can provide the most significant issues. So you can see some places could see slow moving heavy showers and thunderstorms during Friday. And again, the update, the warning was updated earlier today with a focus a little further northwards and east overall. So shifted slightly further eastwards and northwards, extended it a little bit. So it has upgraded slightly overnight. If you do have further details, you can see while some areas will remain dry, slow moving heavy showers and thunderstorms are likely to develop from mid to late morning for decaying through the evening. So still got a good few hours left of development, evening sort of 6, 7 p.m. time. So where thunderstorms occur, 20 to 25 millimetres of rain is possible in less than an hour. And one or two places, 40 to 50 millimetres could fall in a few hours. Hail and lightning are potential additional hazards. So Metoff is definitely emphasising the precipitation. And that's what we've been seeing on the radar so far. Uh, haven't shown li lightning activity because there is lightning activity, but it is pretty minimal. Uh, the, the biggest impact from these thunderstorms is the precipitation at this stage. But lightning activity could become a hazard if we do get one of these cells really popping off. But at the moment, lightning rates aren't there, but they're not substantially, uh, they're not that substantial, to be honest. See, high impact, low likelihood at this stage. So again, where they do occur, they could be quite impactful, but the likelihood of, of, of them occurring any, in, one, any, in any one sort of specific location is quite unlikely. So do have a look at the UKV, seeing what that is showing for the thunderstorm activity today and generally precipitation over the next few days as well. So you can see the activity breaking out around 10, 11 a.m. and sort of invigorating and sort of being peak activity around sort of 3, 4, 5 p.m. So generally when this video is coming out uh, and you can see it just spiraling around and generally turning back towards showers towards the evening. So Met Office warning has them decaying in the evening and that's what we're seeing here from the UKV, decaying generally towards just heavier showers but not disintegrating so still could be some precipitation into the evening and I know plenty of areas are parched at the moment so hopefully we do see some precipitation um, in the areas that do need it, specifically towards the east and the south. So we are seeing that thundery outbreak towards central, southern and eastern England at the moment. Hopefully that does give a wide area at least a few millimetres of rain. Beyond that, through Saturday, things die down a little bit, but then we see some very heavy, potentially thundery rain moving in from the east. There's a big, big weather front. Could give some very significant conditions along this. It is fast moving. It does track through quite quickly, through Ireland and Northern Ireland before decaying a bit, but does give some very heavy precipitation for the time. Further east and southwards, though, it is pretty dry, a bit of cloud around through Saturday. So Saturday doesn't too, look too bad if you're in East Anglia, central, southern England, or maybe even the southwest, escaping rain in the afternoon. But elsewhere, you see a big weather front moving in, some very heavy rain and just bounce of big precipitation. You can see through Saturday evening this massive spiral, and that's a centre of the low moving through. Very significant rain on its northern and eastern edge. Again, could be a rain warning in force for this across western Scotland, because with these repeated bouts of precipitation, it could tot up quite quickly. Through Saturday evening, uh, that precipitation does move eastwards. All areas seeing a bit of rain, but still the south and the east escaping the heavier stuff. Before through Sunday afternoon, we see a bit of a dividing line. Could be 30 degrees in the east and the southeast through Sunday. And uh, that is ahead of the weather front where we've got warmer air. Behind it, much more instability, cooler air, and you can see these big, heavy, thundery showers breaking out. Now the weather front through Sunday evening does clear through southern and eastern areas. And we all go to a northerly wind, a cooler Atlantic air mass, just showery, but not too bad through Monday and Tuesday. And yeah, we can see a few showers around, some cloud, but nothing too major as we head into Wednesday. So yes, cooler air mass is coming in, but it is generally dying out a little bit in terms of that precipitation. So if we have a look at the temperatures today, you can see it is pretty, pretty 
It's pretty low out there, really. Highs around 23 degrees towards the Cambridge area, maybe 24 in Kent. Elsewhere, high teens, maybe low 20s. As we head towards Saturday afternoon, you can see those temperatures peaking, perhaps 26, 27 in the east. Elsewhere, high teens, low 20s. And for Sunday, we're seeing those temperatures rise, potentially to 28, 29, 30 degrees in the far east, but elsewhere further northwards and westwards, towards mid to low 20s, or even mid-teens across Scotland, Northern Ireland, and Republic of Ireland, where we have that heavier precipitation. Into Monday, again, that weather front uh, pushing through means cooler air mass, so still could be 25 degrees in the far east, but elsewhere still back towards average, maybe 18 to 22 degrees for the high temperature. And by Tuesday, we are in a chillier air mass, but with sunshine around, we'll still see those temperatures rise to around 21 to 23 degrees quite widely. And that will continue into Wednesday as well. So not too bad, but nothing too warm at this stage. A bit of a peak in temperatures, perhaps towards the weekend. And Saturday, Sunday could be quite hot, maybe uh, for the far east and the far south, and maybe into the Midlands, depending on how quickly that weather front comes in. But it's beyond that as we head into the last few days of July, into the start of August, where things could be turning much warmer and quite prolonged warmth as well. So if we do have a look at the GFS and see what that is showing over the next couple of weeks. So you can see the weather front moving through, uh, or the low pressure system, sorry, moving through at the moment. And that's going to engulf the UK. And by Monday, we're into a cooler northerly airflow. Four ridge of high pressure built in. Not a massively warm air mass underneath that, but this time of year, the sun's very strong. So it's going to be pretty decent. Beyond that, we do see a bit of an Atlantic flow, but through the last few days, you can see those low pressure systems just get pushed to the far north. So it goes through Scotland, but for the far south and east, we still tap into warmer air to the south. And you see this high pressure stretching up from the south, low pressure from the north. And yes, it turns things slightly more unsettled for Scotland. But for most of England and Wales, we're in a warm, dry air mass, and it would be pretty, pretty pleasant getting up towards the mid to high 20s, maybe touching on 30 degrees. Beyond that, you see that again, high pressure to our south, low pressure to our north, stretching in a south southwesterly wind, so it'll be pretty warm. Right towards the end, run a bit of a northerly flow there, but that is right towards 384 hours, so we'll discount that a little bit. If we do run out to the last, uh, well, beyond day 7, you can see that warm air mass just to our south, 10 to 15 degrees at 850 HPA, just in the far southeast. Yes, weather front's trying to push through at times, but we always recover back toward that 10 to 15 degree at 850 HPA, which would give, temperature, would give temperatures this time of year around the mid to high 20s, maybe touch on 30 degrees if we do get that 15 degree isotherm in. And again, you just see repeated bouts of warm air masses. Even the 20 degree ice firm is not too far away. So you could tap into some really hot air for a short period of time through the first week of August. Again, it is right towards the end of the run, but the potential is there. If you have a look at VGM, see how that does compare. Again, low pressure moving in off the Atlantic at the moment, high pressure toppling in, and generally high pressure to our south, low pressure to our north, a westerly flow, and it's pretty pleasant pretty dry as well again those warm air masses are hanging on into the south just keeping us just gently around or slightly above average so it is pretty decent warm and dry again this is slightly cooler than the gfs but still would get towards those mid to high 20s quite widely along the south uh, and that would be pretty decent now if we do have a look at the ecm WF, see how that does compare. Again, if we do run through, you can see low pressure running in at the moment. High pressure toppling back in, and then generally low pressure to our north, high pressure to our south, and much more high pressure dominated this run. High pressure is shifting much further northwards, and you do see that warm air mass engulfing us. 50 degree ice firm is in control, and we would be very, very warm indeed here for quite a prolonged period of time in the south. That would be giving traditional heat wave conditions i.e temperatures in around the low 30s high 20s low 30s so very warm indeed so if you finish the video but have a look at the latest from the ensemble you can see this well reflected a spike in upper air temperatures towards the weekend and that could give 30 degrees in the far east before we drop below average next week but low precipitation air direction yes is in for the north but it's not going to be too bad temperatures could still get to around average at the surface with the sunshine but it's beyond that, last couple of days of July into the first week of August, generally upper air conditions are above 
Ah, Bougie, the GFS run there is a little bit cooler around the first, second of August, but the majority of runs are around or well above average. So it's looking likely we're warming above, warmer than average, and warmer than, warmer than average this time of year is mid to high 20s, really, with our average high in London being around 23 degrees. So we would be high 20s, maybe touching on 30 degrees on some of these runs, getting towards that high, uh, sort of that mid-teens range on the 850 HPA temperature. Again, looking quite dry, some showery activity, so could see some precipitation here or there, but not looking like anything too crazy at this stage. If you have a look at the two meters temperatures, you can see this little spike on Sunday, perhaps getting towards the high 20s, and in the longer term, you can see that the average on the ensembles is around the mid to high 20s, potentially when you add on a couple of degrees, because these are low resolution, could be touching on 30 degrees in quite a few areas for quite a consecutive period of time. Again, it's not going to be hot in the same places every single day, but it could be a pattern where we do see generally quite warm or hot conditions somewhere in the south, the east, over the next, uh, through that end of August, uh, end of July, early August period, sorry, we do see those hot conditions somewhere for a good week or two. Perhaps. So we'll have to see how it does develop. And if we do compare it to the ECMWF ensembles, just look at the 850 HPA temperature and precipitation. Again, very similar above average towards Sunday, cooler than average for the, for the next week, and then rising above average for the last couple of days of July and start of August. A good couple of degrees above average, so surface conditions would be around the mid to high 20s. Again, you look at the two meter temperatures, and again, getting towards that mid to high 20s potentially on quite a few ensemble members, including the operational and control runs. Operational run getting towards that low 30 range towards the first couple of days of August. So looking very warm indeed. So we'll just have to keep an eye on it at this stage. Um, it is mid to longer range, so things can change, but the general trend is for it to be above average. And quite a few runs, including some of these operational runs, are forecasting traditional sort of heat wave patterns, which is high 20s, low 30s. Nothing alarming at all, but generally warm and dry conditions that people generally would love to enjoy, not the extreme sort of heat wave conditions we've had recently. It's going to be weird from now on, we're going to have to have different categories really of heat wave, because this sort of conditions we could be seeing at the end of month could be a good 5 to 10 degrees cooler than what we've seen earlier this week, but it will still be called a heat wave um, statistically because it will be above heat wave thresholds of 28 degrees or uh, well, 25 to 28 degrees depending on where you are in the country. So we'll have to see exactly what happens with this. It is looking warm and dry in the longer term in the south. Still warm generally further north as well, but perhaps precipitation moving in as well. It does look like we've got a bit of an unsettled period over the next few days, especially in the north and west. And of course, we've got the thunderstorms to deal with this evening or this afternoon and evening as well. So do stay safe out there if you are caught up in them as well. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new and I'll see you again for another video soon.